Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine. Again, another blessed day. The birds is squawking. Spring is here. And the crappie's biting. Well, today we're going to be using a method of fishing or technique called long poling. Here is a 9 foot 2 super sensitive Sam's jig pole. It's a two-piece rod. I've had it for, oh, several years, and I've caught a lot of fish on it. Light as a feather. But today, what's a little bit different is I'm going to be using a 1954 reel. It's a Model 80 Johnson. Perfect, perfect reel for long poling. And we're going to be fishing with a slab tail bait. That's a 1.75 slab tail tied with a loop knot. And we're going to be teasing these fish, which this technique right here has got to be second to none, folks. You're actually holding the bait right in front of the fish's face, okay, by using this loop knot right here. The jig will actually, the buoyancy of the plastic will bring that jig up just like that at 90 degrees and, and that slab tail is going to be waving right in front of that fish this tail right here it's flat it catches water and it just flows just like that when you hold that in front of a crappie like that barely jigging with this old long pole they're going to bite it that's what makes this technique well second to none and all i'm doing is just fishing a 180 degree 180 degrees i'm standing here on this rock so there's 90 degrees that's 180 degrees half a circle and once i fish that circle out i'm going to move again that's how you got to hunt them because if, if I were to move too far from where I actually reached, you see, then <clears throat> I might just miss a big crappie bed. <laughs> so I'm going to walk on out here. Okay. Whoops. to about right here and then repeat that and that way I can comb this whole rip route and then sooner or later we're going to find them but I'm actually going to let this bait hit the bottom like I did right there and just fish around the whole entire distance now, as light as that jig is, it's going to take it a long time to get back up under my rod. You see, it's going to take a long time for it to sweep back up under my rod. So I'm going to make sure that I keep ahead with my rod tip to where this line is laying about a 45 degree angle. And I know that I'm approximately a foot from the bottom right now, which is perfect for bedding fish you want to be about a foot above the bed above the bottom and uh, crappie feed up so they'll just go up there and they'll eat it they will absolutely chomp it come on crappie crappie they there's the first one folks first one oh my I love this reel I can tell y'all right now I love it this is a good fish right here. First crappie. I'm excited. You cannot wear these old reels like this out. They built them back then. They built them to last. Golly, I'm so excited. That's a black crappie. Male. I don't know if I need to flip him or not. Let's get right here and we'll land him. <laughs> It took me a while, it took me about 15 minutes before I got the first bite. 
but we got him. Look at there. I want y'all look. We're not going to hurt this fish. We're going to release him back. Ain't that a beautiful little fish right there? He's not really that little. He's probably 11 and a half inches, but he's a beautiful specimen. That's what we're talking about right there. That's a male, male black crappie. He's got his tuxedo on. That's what they call it. His hormones is all about bedding right now. Let him go. There he goes. Now he'll get back on his nest, which is right over in here, right over here in this area. I don't care how many old nasty boogers old Bursal picks and wipes on his pants. I ain't fishing with him no more. Ooh. I've never used this color right here. Black and pink is a combination is a, a combination, but when it comes to slap tail baits, I haven't. I've used black and pink in other baits um, years past, but I know one thing, it sure looks good in the water. See that? Now that, oh my goodness. Oh my, my, my. If I get in front of a crappie, that jig has had it. We'll come back down through there real slow. What we got, that ain't no crappie. Look at this. <clears throat> a little bitty green sunfish. And I caught him exactly where I caught that crappie. What does that mean? Well, quit. You stop it. Yeah, that's a green sunfish. See the orange on his little... He's a scavenger. He's wanting to eat their eggs. He's hanging around that bed. That's exactly what he's doing. Okay. Go on out of here. The lighter jig that you one can fish with. Okay. Jig head. When you're fishing this way, five and six feet of water, the more fish you're going to catch, the more crappie you're going to catch. Let that be wrote in the book of crappie. They. Now that was a. Just like snapping your fingers. It's a small fish, right? This is a small female. Yep. That's exactly what that is. A little small female. And that little fish eat that. She is little, but right there, y'all can see her eggs right there. She hadn't dropped them all, but she's in the process of it, right in the roof of the mouth, right in the roof of the mouth. That's where you want to catch them. That's a small female. I mean, she might be, she might be nine inches, but I bet she's shy of that just a little bit. I tell you, that's one reason why I like this rod too, folks. This sound super sensitive. It's so limber that even this little crappie felt like she was five or six pounds. There we go, we got her loose. And she's gonna be fine. She's gonna go right back where I caught her from. And she's gonna lay them eggs. So get on back in there, gal. Generally speaking, even when they're bedding, they may not hardly bite at all during the day. And then it, later in the evening, all of a sudden, they start really biting. That's typical of a crappie, even when they're on bed. But let's come right down through there real slow. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Sometimes when they're super finicky, I'll just shake that rod tip a little bit. Just hold it in place. While I'm doing that, that jig is following suit. It's coming right back up under my rod tip slow but it is and that's a good way to catch them fish because this is what that jig's doing let's look at it when i'm shaking it like that it's doing this see that it's doing that and yet and yet it's 
moving at the same time is what I'm saying. And you don't, you don't always have to do that. In other words, just at times. So yeah, that's what it's going to take to get on the bike. Darn. What about that? That's a good one right here. Mm -hmm. Now that fish right there was teased. That's a good one. I set the hook a little hard with a size 8 hook. You don't need to set the hook very hard. Not really. That's a pretty good one. Quit. Not an old giant. But it's a good one. Come on in here. Come on, come on, come on. You're done. I believe that's just a big female. Let's see. Yeah, oh my goodness. Quit, quit. <laughs> We got her. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, that's a big female. That's a beautiful fish right there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I don't know what else to say. But I'm going to show y'all something right here. What I'm wanting to show is where that jig is. Right there, that little jig. Y'all can see that right in the center, but in the roof of that crappie's mouth. If you can, when, when you're long poling like this, or it, it doesn't matter if you're casting, if you can, when you get bit, jerk straight up. I mean, straight up. You know, a lot of times we can't do that, you know, because we'll be out of position, especially if you're fishing in a boat. But on the bank, you you can stay in position a little bit better because you have more control from the bank. That's just the reality of fishing. No doubt more control. But if you can set it straight up, and if you're using size 8 hooks, well, you're going to get him in that tough part, and there ain't no way that crop is going to come off like that. And another thing I'm going to mention, the reason I'm using this little bitty jig head and this size 8 hook is, is because the diameter of these little slab tail baits can't be over 3 sixteenths of an inch, the 1.75 I'm talking about. Three sixteenths of an inch, maybe a quarter, maybe. It's going to be pushing a quarter. Excuse me. That's why I like the size eight hook. A size six hook would look way too big, and it'd be too big, and, and it wouldn't, the bait wouldn't have the action that it could have had if you'd used the smaller hook. I can hear her right now. She's thinking, let me go. Doggone it. There she goes. Ursel's belly's getting so big here lately, folks, till he'll put the, put his belt on and he you know he can't get the pants. He's griping about that. He couldn't get the right pants. But he'll put his belt on and it'll be below his old belly, belly sticking over his belt like that. And his straddle will be, you know, like two feet uh, from his feet way down there you know and and uh he can't run because of that now he can bursal can still book but he can't because of that another trick on these rip routes especially on the coosa river system when you start getting them little bitty green sunfish like that little bitty ones you start missing a lot of them in the area that's good because there's crappie beds around Every time, folks, <laughs> they eat crappie eggs, or they just aggravate them poor old crappie to death. That's uh, so crappie are a lot like bluegill and shellcracker. When something comes over their bed, they're not necessarily hungry; they're hitting it from anger. They're already aggravated, big time aggravated. Account of them little little predators constantly trying to eat their eggs. So they're working hard down there, chasing them away all the time. Head butting them, biting them. <laughs> it's just war down here. It is. It's absolutely war. It just seems like it'd be a good place right here. I fell. That jig's right in between two rocks. And I've mentioned a many a time, that's where they bed on these rip wraps is between those rocks. Especially if you got a four or five foot space in between two rocks, that's a good deal.
that fish was right there see you got a rock here they're visible and a rock here that's what i've been talking about right in between two rocks now there's a lot of that that's going on on out where we can't see but right about let's see right about right in there is where that fish hit i'll fish the area hard real hard before i leave and there's another fish you see that big female was here and this one was over here in between these two rocks golly what a hard pulling that's a good fish that's a female that's a female too yep quit quit big pretty female my 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 i might may be the biggest fish i've caught Let's see where this yeah same thing see that straight up hook set that i'm talking about y'all see that straight up hook set caught that fish right there in the tough part see i gotta actually get my pliers even though it's a size eight hook i still gotta get my pliers to get her loose <laughs> so a lot of crappie fishermen see that size eight hook is too darn small no it's not no, it's not. You match the size, the jig hook, to the size of bait in diameter that you're fishing with, or I do. I'm very specific when it comes to that, folks. I believe I catch more fish. Let's let, let's go right here. And let this one go. Come on back, that was a big female. And she still had eggs eggs in her if y'all notice if you can let me hold it up right there that little hook is at an angle it's at an angle up i bent it with a pair of pliers on purpose to do that that hook won't slip in that crappie's mouth that hook could get him when he inhales it in there and when i set the hook it won't slip that point will penetrate wherever it is when i set the hook there is no sliding no sliding whatsoever. That is supreme important. There he is. That's a black. That's a black crappie, and that's a male. Golly, I can't tell y'all how that fish is pulling. He's mad. When I stuck that hook to him, he was he got mad immediately. With that, let's see where we can. I don't know how he's hooked. Let's look at him right here. I'm in a bad place right here. There we go, we got him. Now I'm right here on the end of the shallowest part of the rip route. Matter of fact, there's no need for me to go any farther that way because it is extremely, it's too shallow. But there's the male. Male black crappie. Okay. Ain't that pretty. I'm hung up in the tree. Y'all ever do that? You know, that's a silly question. We all do it. If you fish, you're going to stay hung up, tangled up, twisted up all the time. Let's let him go. Let's see if we can. I'm just going to drop him in right there. Sometimes directions makes it a big difference. They'll hit it going one way, like we're going this way right now, better than they will going this way. And and it's simple why it's because of the position of the sun. Crappie are just like bass. I mean, they have non-lidded eyelids. Can't shut their eyes, so they're going to position in such a way that they can keep most of that sun, if they can, out of their eyes. There's another one. Oh, that's a good one right here. That's back reel. We'll back reel on this fish. Man, that's a good one. I believe that's a big female. Yep. That's a big female. 
Come on in here, gal. So we caught the male and the female. What about that? Let's see, I think she's hooked pretty good. Come on in here now. Don't. We just want to take a look at you. <laughs> wow. Look at there, look at there, look at there. Now, so far I've only caught all black crappie, folks. Just black crappie, no white crappie. And um, in the when they're when they're spawning, get a lot of questions about this. But when they're spawning, the males are black, and the females, well, they remain the same color, just like this. Now this fish is the same way. She's got a few more eggs, but not many. She's got a few more to lay. She's about laid out. That one is. So we're going to let her go. Whew. Okay, let's look at her deal right here. Now this is actually a six-pound test. High-vis line, I believe it's Mr. Crappie. And I have a, a double uni knot right there. And I have a, about a three-foot piece of um four pound test floor carbon line right here this is a, a loop knot tied to this little bitty jig and i don't know what size jig it is or how heavy it is it's probably <laughs> oh i don't know i don't know it's very very light it's got a size eight hook in it um and i'm using a little one point um well, it's actually an inch and three-quarter long. Inch point seven five slab tail bait. I'll get it out in a minute. Okay, it's the inch point seven five super slab tail. Black with pink tail. 1.75, inch and three-quarter long. A little size eight hook. Little bitty hook. But with this limber rod, I trust the hook. I've caught some big crappie through the years where I ate would hold them, hold them fine. I would imagine this jig is probably a 1 64th of an ounce. It could even be a little bit lighter than that, but that's fine. The lighter, the better. The less you're gonna get hung up around these rocks. And also a light jig like this will give you the opportunity to hold it in front of a fish for a longer period of time. Well, folks, I'm gonna let it go caught quite a few fish pretty quick i'm going to tell you what uh this is going to be a permanent fixture to this rod right here there's no doubt about it it goes together just like bread and butter <laughs> and that's going to be my new and probably for now on jig reel for a long polling a technique that is second to none and also folks i want to say thank you to Bill Sims and his wife and I remember her name but I didn't ask her permission to say her name so hey I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all thank y'all for all the great comments everything y'all do for this channel whoa dog I mean, you see the rock this rock I could throw this rock four or five thousand feet thousand feet and to remember go fishing when you can because it's good for you